I agree with what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying. Stop agreeing with yourself. Stop agreeing with yourself. Hello and welcome to Glass Half Full Reviews, the optimistic fanboy review show. And today I'm going to be reviewing a very different sort of movie. It's the kind of movie that nobody saw. I am going to be reviewing The Giver. Now, of course, as per usual, I'm going to be doing my one-take review, so <laughs> let's hope I don't screw up. So The Giver is based off of a 1993 classic dystopian children's book by Lois Lowry, also called The Giver. And I guess, you know, it took 20 years to make this movie. I never actually read the book back in the day, so I don't really have any particular memories one way or the other. I, mean, I know a lot of people who really love the movie or really love the book or hated the movie because they love the book or vice versa. So, I don't know. For me, no attachment one way or the other. I just don't particularly care. I just want to see it as it was. Do I like this movie or do I not like this movie? And that's really what it came down to. So, the story is kind of an interesting take on things. I wouldn't call it particularly original, but on the other hand, we're talking about a 20-year-old story, so... I guess you can't really expect that much. But the idea is in some kind of distant future of some sort, there's this weird floating island city thing. And it's not exactly clear about the geography either. Um, I don't know if the book is a little bit more specific about that kind of thing, but it doesn't really matter. In a very clean, consistent, everyone's the same kind of community. Everyone dresses the same, everyone looks the same. There's this little kid, his name is Jonas. He's getting older about to graduate from whatever their equivalent of high school is, where everyone will be assigned their jobs in life. Yeah, a typical sort of thing for a lot of these kind of dystopian stories. Everyone has a specific role. And there's this other idea about memories, and that the entire past, all the bad, all the strong memories have all been wiped away because they lead to problems. Everyone is very mild. Everyone is very controlled. There's no ambiguity. There's a, a a series of sort of running, almost gags in a way about people saying, precision of language, precision of language. You know, kind of amusing at times. So Jonas was played by this kid, uh, Brenton Thwaites. Probably mispronouncing his name, but, you know, whatever. So, he doesn't know what he's going to do. You know, his girl friend, I say girl friend, but she's a little girl friend, is going to become probably someone working with kids. Because she really is great working with babies. But Jonas has no idea. So, what is he going to do? Well, after everyone goes through this ceremony where they're decided, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to be a drone pilot, you're going to be a doctor, etc., etc., he gets the most important job of all, to be a receiver. Which means he's going to be the new receiver of the shared memories for everybody. And it's significant because only one person gets them, and they have to advise the Council of Elders, exactly how to deal with things that are outside their experience. You know, they take the burden on themselves, this receiver, so that you know they can actually deal with all these memories without all the other people. Supposedly, I guess it's someone who's like psychologically stronger than everyone else. It's not exactly clear what makes him special, but whatever. So one of the interesting things that's being done in the movie is that into this point, everything is very desaturated. It's all mostly black and white. And not only that, but that's actually like a plot point because he literally does not see color. Nobody does. But then he meets the giver, who's played by uh, Jeff Bridges. And it's interesting because he gives these memories coming down. And I thought it was very interesting to see exactly what he picks. He starts with very pleasant stuff. You know, some music, some dancing, some weddings. And as... This kid Jonas starts to see this stuff. He starts to gain more insight into the world around him. He starts to see colors. Now, I've read some interesting psychological stuff about how people actually don't necessarily see as many colors as other people, depending on how their language describes it. So I feel like there could actually be something to that. Although it turns out there's also like drugs that sort of deaden people's emotional states. So I feel like there's probably a little bit of that there too. There's a lot of sort of heavy philosophical questions like, okay, what's your place? Is it okay to feel emotional stuff? I feel like the movie is pretty strong on the position of 
you shouldn't deaden all your emotions. You should feel things. But, well, I'm sure there will be some people who disagree with that. Essentially, he goes through these hmm, revelations, and maybe our society is kind of corrupt, and, ooh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. There's kind of like the chief elder played by Meryl Streep, and she's sort of a villain, but not exactly, because everyone's kind of sort of like a, a hapless villain. Like, they don't realize what they're doing is oppressive. So they're just all part cogs in the machine that keeps going. And Jeff Bridges is the only one who realizes that it is a machine, and he's trying to teach this kid Jonas about it. So, that's just sort of how it goes, and he has an adventure, and he has to figure out, him is he going to try to save people, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't want to give it away for anyone who hasn't read the book. I suppose the book is supposed to be really good, so I don't want to give that kind of thing away either. From my perspective, I guess I did like the movie, but I didn't love it. It was pretty enjoyable. It was a very typical kind of dystopian thing. I didn't find the messages particularly you know, amazing. They were very normal, like, oh, don't be a monster. <laughs> you know, you should experience life in terms of emotion all across the board. You can't have pleasure without pain. You can't have joy without sadness because you don't understand the difference. It's all sort of running together otherwise. So, for me, in general, I think the movie is pretty decent. Now, some people hate it. Some people call it boring or terrible. I don't know. I don't understand that. It, it seems perfectly fine to me. I don't really understand why people dislike it so much. I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's enough preamble. Let's get into my five-point breakdown. Five-point breakdown. So, starting from the top, I thought the acting was pretty decent here. I don't think there are any weak points per se, except maybe some of the, maybe some of the like the tertiary characters. Jonas's parents are played by Alexander Sarsgaard and Katie Holmes, and Alexander Sarsgaard has a character that's very low-key, I think by design, so it's not exactly as interesting, but I guess I can't really be mad about that. And his mother's played by Katie Holmes, and she kind of plays like this horribly shrewd, shrill character. Now again, I can't really necessarily blame her because it seems like that's the way the character was written, but it does make her very unpleasant, and I there seems some notes of, like, sexism there in some way. Why is her character and also Meryl Streep's sort of the only really villainous characters of the piece? I mean, it is true that he has a bit of a... Jonas, I mean, it has a bit of a love triangle. Not... I shouldn't say love triangle. He just has a bit of a romance with Fiona, who's this girl uh, that he knows. And, you know, basically there's a little bit of something there that apparently wasn't in the books. But I think they're both pretty good. This guy, Brenton Thwaites, is perfectly fine. I don't think he's amazing, he's not a revelation, but I think he's pretty good. I certainly didn't cringe at any of his moments. I thought some of his scenes of gaining insight into emotions were actually pretty great. And uh, Dea Rush, who played Fiona, I thought she was pretty decent, too. Kind of, you know, fresh-faced young person. Yeah, nothing amazing, but fine. I mean, Meryl Streep, I mean, she's a great actress, but it didn't seem like she was doing very much here. I actually liked Jeff Bridges a lot more. I felt like he was really getting into it in a very interesting way and you actually felt some of some of the pain behind some of his decisions some of his past mistakes i did like that all right that moves us on to number two of course which is the story the story is very typical it's very normal this kind of dystopian thing i didn't find it particularly interesting or unique the stories are you know whatever i i guess take it or leave it as my perspective it was well paced enough so that i didn't feel it was too long but it, there were definitely parts where it was like, well, okay, you're either hammering me over the head with your message, or you're kind of dragging it along a little bit. So it's not like such a you know, perfectly done thing. But in general, it's decent enough. Number three. Well, this is one of the things I really liked about the movie. The way the color changes depending on whose perspective it is. And as Jonas is getting more and more into this memory stuff, the colors change. They become more and more saturated until they become like you know actual legitimate colors i really like that i also liked a lot of the visions that you could see of his past i thought that worked pretty well that was something i also quite liked so from that perspective i really did like the way it visually looked i thought there was a very interesting costume design and very interesting art design from the community i liked that kind of consistency to give that dystopian feel it's kind of fun to see how people choose this sort of thing so that was nice number four and <laughs> so, I guess I felt a little muddled 
leaving this because it's like, I don't know, it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. I didn't have a problem with this movie at all. I don't know, I, I guess, to me, it's very forgettable. I suppose for some people, maybe they read this book as kids and they really connected to it. Maybe it was one of the first dystopian type books they had read. But nowadays, I just feel like we have better stuff. We have more interesting, dynamic ideas. I think the Hunger Games movies, haven't, again, haven't read those books either. I think they're better at the dystopian thing at this point. I just think maybe it was innovative for its time 20 years ago. But I don't know. Even then, I, I don't know. I feel like there's already been a lot of dystopian things. And it's nothing that really stands out to me. So from that perspective, I have to sort of give it a meh. All right, move on to number five. And I feel there's been a lot of talk about some of the philosophy here. Uh, to me, it seems very cut and dried, very simple, okay? It's good not to deaden yourself. It's good not to kill people, you know, and what's the controversy here? I guess there's some people who are very zen, maybe who don't appreciate the emotional feelings that people have. But in general, I just find it's very simplistic. I don't think of it as that, you know, confusing or mixed messages or even that deep, from my perspective. It was kind of a nice little thing to see, but it's very forgettable from my perspective. I guess I would give this movie a, well, you got nothing better to do. This is totally like a streaming kind of recommendation. I would not go out to the movie in particular to see this movie. Maybe if you really love the book just to see it, I hope you don't get furious with the adaptation. I mean, from my perspective, I didn't see any you know, serious flaws with it. But on the other hand, it was just kind of forgettable, just a typical sort of thing. And that's how I feel. Thanks for stopping by.